Hey everybody, welcome back. So in this video I want to answer the question of do you need to dry your polycarbonate filament? And to that end I have a Rosewill food dehydrator that I have converted into a filament dryer. It is not in the shot at the moment. I have a Rubbermaid 21 cup food container with a roller system that I got from Thingiverse. And I'll put a link to all of this. I'll put a link to my other videos in the cards. And I'll put a link to all these items down in the comment section below. If I forget one, let me know. I also have the Polymaker Polylite polycarbonate filament. I have an enclosed and modified Ender 3 that will print the polycarbonate at the correct temperatures. I have this model I got from Thingiverse. And I have printed it's a candle holder. I have printed it in vase mode. You see it says shelf on the bottom to indicate this is the one I printed with the filament that came open on the shelf, been sitting on the shelf open for four or five days at about 30% humidity. And it's not a bad print, not bad at all. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dry it a little in print. I'm gonna dry it a lot in print. And then I may actually see how damp I can get it for half a day or so and we'll see if that will really affect it or not. And hopefully when we're all done, we'll know. Do you need to dry your polycarbonate filament? It is, um, it's been pretty steady in the mid-35s in the house. The air conditioner is running, but it's a kind of a humid time of year here. Uh, we are 35C inside the enclosure, and I am going to be printing at uh, 260 and 260 nozzle. Um, bed temperature 90, I warmed it up a little bit, it's not there yet. This is the Polymaker Polylite PC filament, and I am going to be printing the goblet with spiralized outer contour set. It's about a two and a half hour print, so let's see what it looks like with 35% humidity. Okay, so now that we have printed our control here, which was printed after the filament sat on the shelf open for a week at roughly 30 degrees, 30% 30 humidity, now we are going to put the spool of filament and the desiccant packs in the dryer. Now, I have read different things about what temperature and what times you could use for drying polycarbonate filament. Honestly, I'm not exactly sure. I read one that said it should be at 80 C for eight hours. This does not go to 80 C. 70 is its highest. And I'm not a big fan of running things at their max for long periods of time. Uh, so you know what? I'm going to run this. I'm going to drop it down from 70. From max at 70. Let's drop it down. Let's try 60. For four hours and see if we can improve upon this. It is currently 12.52. We'll give it four hours. We'll come back around 5 p.m. We'll get that out. We'll print another one of these. It'll go right into the dry box from the dryer with the desiccant packs I just dried and into the printer and I will have a piece of Bowden tube on here that leads down to the enclosure. The enclosure will be preheated. The bed will be preheated and we'll see if that doesn't improve this. I preheated the bed and the enclosure when I made this. I always do. So um, yeah, we'll see if we can get an improvement. I would love to get that even more transparent. So we'll be right back. Let's put the lid on. What did I do with the lid? There it is. Put the lid on. If I can get the lid on. Come on lid. There you go. We'll flip it on. And we'll be back in four hours. Okay, so it has been in there about, can you see that? About four and a half hours. So we're going to pull that out. I'm going to get it in the dry box. I'm going to spend as little time going across there as I can. Put the desiccant packs in with it. I'm going to have to set the camera down to do that. So hang on. Okay, my filament is in there. My desiccant packs are ones in the bottom. 
One is along front and the back. I've got a little bit of filament stuck through there and I'm um, going to get it back in the printer. It's been preheating. We okay, should be ready we are go. all in. As you can see, my Bowden tube goes all the way down into the enclosure, right up to where it starts to feed into the, the feeder. Our interior temp is at 34.2 and climbing. Our nozzle is set to 260, our bed is set to 290. That number there, right, sorry, right there, that will be 50 before much longer. So I am going to start the print. trying to do it while I'm looking at the camera and it's not working very good. There we go. And I'll get the camera on the tripod and zoom it up to like 600 times normal speed and um, we'll get this printed and take a look at it. Okay, so here are the first two I printed. I honestly don't know that I think there's a really significant difference between the two, but we'll take another look at them a little later. Okay, so just to make absolutely sure the filament was dry, let's go ahead and do what I didn't want to do before. Let's put the filament and the desiccants back, back in, and this time we're going to crank it all the way up to 70. We're going to turn it on, and we're going to leave it in for 8 hours. It right now is 10 minutes to 1, 12.49. We'll be back at around 8 p.m. tonight. Hey everyone, so that filament has been in there for... It is 1947 or 847, the same day. It has been there for damn near exactly 8 hours, maybe a couple of minutes short. Let's um, get it out of there. I'm going to turn the power off at 65C, which is as high as this will go. I didn't have a thermometer in there, but it's pretty damn warm. So, I'm going to put one of those down there. Get the these other, oops, get these other two out. Filament's going right in on the roll. I'm going to stick one of those in there and there. Oops, got to pop the, um, got to pop it out of the, out of there. I put it in wrong, didn't I? Crap. Okay, turn it around. <laughs> there are days, you know, you ever have one of those days? I have a lot of them. Okay, filaments through the hole. All three desiccant packs are in there. Man, there's a storm going on outside. Got thunder and lightning and they say there's going to be, um, how did they say it was going to be? Hail the size of a quarter or something like that. Okay, that's back in. I've got the chamber and the printer warmed up. Let's get this in and let's print another one of All those. Right. Here we go. It is in and running and for some reason this fitting isn't holding that. I'm gonna have to tape it on there or something temporarily. Yeah, it doesn't hold that. It pulls right off. <laughs> okay, I'll tape that on temporarily. There's the two I already did. The next one is going and I will be back to show it to you. Okay, here we go. Right off the shelf, four hours of dry, eight hours worth of drying. And I don't know if you can see it in the, on the shot from the camera, but, and the difference isn't huge, but as you go across, each one of these has slightly more shine than the previous. It's not that notable going from this one to this one, or from this one to this one, but when you go from this one to this one, I think it starts to become noticeable. This one is shinier, has more luster and more reflectivity. Does it affect the print in any way? It doesn't seem to, to me, to have affected it in any other way. Okay, so what's left to do? I'm going to take off an amount of filament equal to make one of these, and probably a little more so I don't screw up. I am going to put it in my little box for eight hours with that little, that little sonic humidifier running. I'm going to try and keep it around 80% humidity for eight hours and we'll see if we can really tell if having it super humid is going to make it 
any different than what we're seeing on these. And for that, back to the garage. All right, so here's the setup. I've got my larger of the plastic hefty containers. I have a damp sponge and just damp and squeezed out as much as I could just because I don't want it absorbing any of the moisture that I want to go into the filament. And I have my little sonic humidifier otherwise known as a essential oil diffuser but there's just straight water in it. I haven't had oil in that for a very long time and I had it all cleaned out. So it's just a diffuser and as you can see I'm going to start it up. I don't know if you can see it there but it's putting out a decent little amount of moisture. I have enough of the polycarbonate filament to print one of those little vases and those are in if i haven't already mentioned it those are in spiral mode in cura so it's a single a single layer all the way around i've got my little horribly abused little meter here we're gonna kind of set that there and it is 2 41 p.m today i'm gonna leave that in for eight hours that means i'm gonna be taking it out i'm gonna be taking it out pretty late and running this print oh well that's life right and um we'll be back i'm gonna put the lid on and yeah you know what let's swap the position of the meter and the sponge let's just make a complete mess out of this <laughs> now let's put this in the front so it's a little easier to see here there we go that can be seen it's already up to 50 and we'll put that sponge back in there I think we're good to go and um, there we go we can see that 52 and climbing and um, yeah I'm gonna give that eight hours and we'll be back okay it is can you see that it is 1038 just about 1039 it has been it has been 12 hours it is 85% humidity inside my little box and you know something I'm too damn tired to do it tonight so I'm going to fill the little water thing and we're going to come back in another 12 hours and try again or maybe not 12 maybe um maybe 10 maybe 10 and and do it so um it's nighttime I'm going to bed see you guys tomorrow okay it is the next morning it is Oh, 9.53, that makes, what, about 20 and a half hours? Sorry, the watch I put on this morning does not have a date window, but it is the next morning. And you see the sun shining through the cracks in the garage door. We are at 87% humidity. And um, let's get that out of there and let's see how it prints. And just to make sure that I'm not drying it out while it is being printed, it is in the once dry box with the damp sponge and the lid and I am going to print directly from within that okay here we go last test I hope after there are the three previous ones after 20 and a half hours of humidifying at 85 percent or higher humidity and printing from within a within the once dry box now the damp box with a damp sponge and I'll be back okay here we go the finale this one is the one that came off the shelf in 30 32 percent humidity it had been open on my shelf for four or five days at least this one is the one that had been dried for four hours at 65 c this one is the one that had been dried for the four hours at 65 c plus eight more at 70 c and there is a definite difference between those. I mean, there really is. I don't know how well the how well the um, camera is showing it, but there is a definite appearance improvement each along the way. You notice it mostly when you go from the one from the shelf to the one that had been dried for the maximum amount of time. There is this one is shinier and it just is better looking. I mean, it's not. Is it huge? No, it's not huge. Is it better? Yeah, it is. Absolutely better. So now you're asking, Chuck, what about the one that you had in the that you had moisturizing, so to speak, for 20 and a half hours? Well, 
here it is. It looks like complete and total crapola. I mean, it is, com and I don't know why the oddball changes in shape. That's, I, I, unfortunately, I wasn't watching it. I, it's the same, it's the same G-code printed all four of them. Oh, and one thing, I had the cooling fan on at 50% from, from 0.6 on up, from layer height 3 on up. I did not do that on purpose. I don't know why that was set like that. Um, but it was the same on all three, so there is that. You'll also notice all the stringing inside of it. Also, when I squeeze it, you can hear it. The layers are separating. These don't do that. I can, I can squeeze it till it dents in the sides, and there's no layer separation, even on the one that had been open on the shelf. There's no layer separation. So, oh, and I will, <clears throat> I will put in the short video of it was this one holding water for a few hours but it was watertight and um, so there you have it do you need to dry your polycarbonate filament here's my take if you live in an area like I do where the humidity rarely goes much above 30 35 percent and you're not worried about the difference in appearance the slightly more lustrous look of this one over this one then the answer is probably you don't. If you do care about appearance, yes, you do. If you live in a, my opinion is you live in a, in an area where the humidity is 50, 60 percent higher all the time, yeah, if you don't want kind of, some kind of crap looking like this, in my opinion, you better be drying it right alongside your nylon. All the rest I've found doesn't make a bit of difference. So, that's it for now. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope we all learned something and know where to go from here. Please like and subscribe. Use my affiliate links, hit notifications, all that stuff. And I will catch you guys in the next video. Bye for now. Okay, and since I know you guys are going to ask me, will it hold water? Here it is. It is full of water. Been sitting on that napkin for a... Did you see that? Full of water. It's been sitting on that napkin for a couple hours. Completely bone dry. It absolutely does hold water. Will it hold any other type of liquid substance? I don't know, and I'm not really that interested in finding out.